Hello everybody, welcome. Now then, today I've been asking a few people when I'm going to start doing this. You see that? More takeaway secrets by Kenny McGovern. I ain't done a recipe out of it yet. Um, I'm not really going to start doing it until the winter when all this cost of living crisis comes in because people ain't going to be able to afford takeaways. But I'm going to do one today, just a simple one. I'm going to do... You see that? You see that with a light? Done a kebab. Why not? And while that's doing, I can get on with packing my lad's bag. Uh, no, not being kicked out, going in the army. Um, so let me show you what we're going to do. Right, this is everything I've got. It says uh, KG of uh, lamb mince. But what I'm going to do, because lamb's quite expensive. I mean, I think that was about four and a half pound. And uh, they've got beef as well. And I'm having beef. So that was only one seventy nine. I'm just going to mix it together. Uh, say spending like eight or nine quid on just a lamb. I thought, well, save yourself three or four quid doing mixing it together. So I'm going to do that. And I've got some uh, garlic powder. Some onion granules. Some paprika. Some cayenne pepper. Dried oregano, where is it? There it is. Uh, Italian herbs and a bit of coriander. And also some salt and pepper, that's in the cupboard, which I'll get out in a minute. So first things first, and some plain flour. Forgot about the plain flour. So we want uh, half a teaspoon of plain flour in a bowl. Only half. Half a teaspoon. Two teaspoons of garlic powder. Two teaspoons of onion pa onion powder granules. Quarter of a teaspoon of coriander. Three teaspoons of cayenne pepper. One and a half teaspoons of paprika. One and a half teaspoons of oregano. Half a teaspoon of Italian herb. That'll probably do. Two teaspoons of salt. And a quarter of a teaspoon of black uh, of pepper. Now mix all that together. Then we want to add both the mince and get it all mixed in. So I've got lamb and beef. Lamb. Now it says combine it all. Uh, using sli slightly wet hands. So I'll just wet my hands and just mix and knead. Get it all coated up. There's no eggs or nothing going in it apparently, so I hope it's gonna stay together. Use your fist, get a punch. I know some people put them like in food processors and that, don't they? Mix it all up and that. But the book doesn't say that, so. Mind you, it doesn't say put beef in either. But. Needs must. Done. Just wash my hands. Right then, wash my hands. Now that says, pre the oven, 180 degrees, shake the donut kebab into a loaf, uh, a long loaf, the length of the baking tray, place in the pre the oven, in the middle shelf for 40 minutes, turning the donut to ensure it's evenly browned for another 40 minutes. 
So it's 40 minutes both sides. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cut that in half. And I'm going to do half in the uh, air fryer, in the rotisserie thing. To see if that works. Um, the only problem I'm going to have is I don't know whether it's going to collapse in, on the rotisserie when it turns. Because there's no eggs or nothing to bond in, is there? But I'm going to try anyway. Because why not? I could, I could actually put them in the fridge for half hour, couldn't I? Wrap it up. I know they're going to be a bit smaller, but... So I think I'll put a big sc a screw through there. I think it's just going to collapse, isn't it? Will it? I'm not sure. We're going to find out anyway. Right, there's them two. Um, yeah, because I think that'll collapse if I put the stuff in it, wouldn't it? What I might do with that one, with the one that's going in the air fryer, is I might wrap it in foil. And as it starts cooking, take the foil off. I might do that. Right, I've got my rotisserie thing here. I'm just going to try it and just see, but I, I think it's going to collapse. Let's get that through the middle. Oh, it might hold. It might hold, actually. We'll give it a go and we'll see what happens. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Experiment. Get that in the middle. It's about the middle there, isn't it? Mm, we'll find out. We'll find out. I'm not 100% confident on this one. Uh, maybe. It might. It might. Because it's going to keep turning. So you might not have the weight on the one side. Well, I'm going to get that one in the air for I straight away. Because I've got to wait for the oven to warm up for that one. Right, I'm going to put it in. Uh, it looks like it might be falling apart already, but we'll see. We'll see anyway. Get on that side. Oh no, it's that side first, isn't it? Get it in. Like that. Uh, rotisserie. I don't know what. 180 degrees. I'll put it on for half hour. Um, it's turning, look. Well, I'll keep an eye on it. I don't want to put... Uh, a tray at the bottom there because I want it to cook on both sides as it's spinning. Um, I'll just leave it on that and we'll see what happens. Right, I put some, uh, didn't say put any parchment paper or anything on the bottom of the, the tray, but I'm going to just in case it sticks. I ain't bothered if it catches the juices because that's what you want in it anyway. So that's going in there and it's going to go in for 40 minutes, middle shelf, 180 degrees, and turn over after 40 minutes. So we'll do that and we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, it's been in about five minutes. I knew that would happen. Look. <laughs> I knew it would. There's nothing to bond it together. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to scrape all that out. I'm going to put it in some foil. I'm going to cook it in the foil. So I'll clean all that up and all that. Let it cool down and that. And that's what I'm going to do. Right then. So what I've done, I've just wrapped it in some foil. Uh, put it all back together, wrapped it in foil. I don't know whether that's going to work because when you take the foil off, it might disintegrate. But I'm going to try it anyway. I was just thinking what I should have done was see it first in the frying pan, shouldn't I? What I learned by my mistakes. I'm going to get that back on now. Uh, how long is left on there? Turn it back off. And I'll just keep an eye on it and see what happens. I'm just washing everything up and I've just come back and had a look and it's all gone again, look. So there's no bonding agent in it, is there? So I don't think it's going to work in there without eggs and that. Ugh. Right, wash up again. Uh, wash it. Get it out again. Um, I'll probably just stick it in the oven. Messing around doing this all the time. Right, they're done. Uh, the one that was in the oven looks good, lovely. The other one looks a bit rubbish. It's all fell apart, then it? There's the one that was in the oven. So it's not very big now, obviously, because I cut them in half. That one looks a bit like a turd. But it says, absolutely, after that, wrap it in some, uh, some foil. For five or ten minutes just to keep the juices in. 
I mean, I've lost a lot of juices anyway. But, yeah, that was a pain that was doing that in that rotisserie. I knew that had happened though. It's got no agent on it, has it? Uh, I'm not, I will try that again one day. I'll probably put some egg in it and maybe sear it first. But I ain't got time to mess around all day. That's the problem. I'm going to wrap this up. Not very big, but it'll do for a few. Let's get this one. I mean, it stayed together now, look, now it's all bonded and that. I was just thinking it might have been that like, fat, more than too much fat in the, in the beef. But oh well, we, we learn, I learn from my mistakes. Well, I'm going to leave them for like 10 minutes, look it says. Then we'll chop some up and we'll have a look. Well, it's been about 10 minutes. Um, What I'm going to do, because we're not having ours yet, we're having it for tea like, a bit later on. So I'm going to leave that one, the main one. That was in the oven, that was all done in the oven. I'm going to leave that there for a minute. I will review it when I do all our pitters and that with it in the salad. But I'm not going to open that one for a minute. I'm just going to leave it in there in the juice. I'm just going to have a little go of this one. The one that fell apart, that was all over the place. It looks a little bit dry now, that one does. But we'll find out. Let's cut the end off. I'll see if I can cut some out of the crunchy bit. Hmm. There it is. Hmm. Let me have a little review of that bit. It does taste quite nice. Well, I'll say there it is. Oh, can you see that properly? There it is. Um, yeah, it's quite dry now, that one is. But I was expecting that. But, it tastes really nice. It, um, you got a little spice there. It's a nice little kick. It is a little bit dry, but that's, that was the one that was in that air fryer. Um, does it taste like chippy? No, of course it don't. Of course it doesn't. Um, but would you have that? Well, I'll do a proper review at the end anyway. I'll do a proper review at the end when I do the other one with the salad and that in it. But, it is nice, just a little bit dry. But that might be down to me. So when we have our tea in a bit, in about an hour, I'll, uh, I'll review that one. I'm hoping it doesn't dry out, but it's wrapped up, so it should stay in the juice. Uh, so, I'll, I'll show you then and we'll see. Right, so what I've done... Off camera, I made myself some uh, some salad in there, some lettuce, some cucumber, some tomatoes. Um, with the meat, I've chopped I've chopped it up. And what I've done with all them juices that are left over on the uh, parchment paper, I just spread them around the top of it. Um, now I was thinking about it. I mean, everyone's tried a little bit, and they all liked it. Everyone in the house. But I think it's a bit more like uh, meatloaf than, uh, what do you call it, kebab. Um, that's why I think a lot of people put them in food processors, don't they? To get that, get them really fine. But anyway, um, there, and they also have no pit of breads up our shop. So I just have to get them. Well, they're good enough. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to build it up anyway. Bit of lettuce, bit of tomato in there. Get it all set up. So I'll put it in the flat bread. Hope you can see that. Can't see the camera. Yeah, it looks a bit more like 
Make loaf look if you have a look closely. Put it up. Some lettuce. Some tomato. And I've also realised I haven't got no garlic mayo in. I absolutely love garlic mayo. So I have to put normal mayo on. Mayonnaise and I'm having a bit of chilli sauce on mine. Absolutely love garlic mayo as well. Ghost chilli ch sauce. There we go. I mean, it looks nice, doesn't it? And it looks very appetising. It does indeed. I'm going to build the other one. Well, there's the thumbnail. Uh, build them all up. And they do look nice, don't they? They do look very appetising. Um, and don't forget, it's the first time attempting it as well. So... As you do it more, you're going to get better, aren't you? Anyway, let's have a proper taste test now, then. So what do you think yourselves? Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it, I mean, for some are cheap, yes. I mean, the lamp wasn't cheap. The lamp was, what, four and a half. But how much is, um, how much is a kebab in the shop, in the chipping out, about seven and a half quid in, I bet you. So there it is anyway, let's tuck in and have a look. Now I've got the salad on. It does taste like a lot like a kebab. But I think if you uh, put the mints in a food process it'd be a lot better. But it does taste like a kebab. What do you think, Bab? I like it. You like it? Mm. She likes it. We've done eight. I think it's really nice. Everyone's had some. It is nice, isn't it? Mm. Now you got the mayo and everything as well, it's not as dry. No. Well that's probably just down to me with the, the cooking, maybe cooked it five or ten minutes too long. I don't know. It's lovely. But it's trial and error, isn't it? But yeah. I've done eight. I've done eight. Um, everyone's had two. So, and the whole lot cost me about, about a tenner. For the whole lot with the seasonings and that, yeah, about a tenner. Four, five, six. Yeah, about about a ten pound for the lot. Uh, so what's that? So we, well, we had eight. So one pound twenty each or something stupid like that for a kebab. Worth it. I mean, you haven't got to have two, have you? You can just have one and a few chips with it or something. Well, there you go, something simple. I will be doing a lot more then. Um, but I'm going to wait till the winter. Just to cost of living and all that stuff. And then people can't afford to go out and they might be looking at stuff like that. And it might be a good, interesting book. So, yeah. Um, Kenny McGovern. And I'm going to go and eat it now anyway. So, I'm the old food guy. Give us a like, give us a subscribe. Till the next time, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.